I must ask you about Rupa Huck. Um, uh, Labour colleague, no Lau has lost the whip. This after she, I think quite extraordinarily, although perhaps not surprisingly for Rupa Huck, uh, during a question and answer session at a, at a fringe meeting said of the, uh, the Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng, he's superficially a black man, but again, he's got more in common. Well, he went to Eton. He went to a very expensive prep school all the way through top schools in the country. If you hear him on the Today programme, you wouldn't know he's black. She's apologised. Keir Starmer has in the last half hour said that he believes what well, her comments were racist, but she did stood by her comments at the time. Can you ask me, what do you think she meant by those comments? Well, I'm not going to try and justify her comments because I, I think they justify. are racist. I'm asking what you think she I mean, meant I'm not, by it. I, I'm not going to, I'm, I, I'm not going to second guess what she meant by them because I don't think there's any justification for them. I, I think they are completely wrong. They are racist and they were incredibly stupid. Um, and she has uh, apologised, uh, and she, but more importantly, she has lost uh, the, the whip from, from the Labour Party. Keir stepped in very quickly, as he does in these sort of cases, uh, to send a clear signal that those those comments are absolutely wrong. Um, it, they're absolutely wrong. If you'd heard her say that at a fringe meeting, would you have spoken out at the time? Well, I, I would have known immediately that what she was saying would you have, was racist Would you have stupid. said at that time... I, 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 so, would you have said yes, that's unacceptable? I would, I would, I would have done Why I, did Annalise Dodds not do that? She's a former shadow chancellor, now the party chairman. She didn't speak up. She was sitting next to her when she made those comments. What do you make of that? Well, I don't know. I wasn't. I wasn't there. Uh, you know, uh, but I, I've done. I've done lots of fringe meetings. I've done lots of interviews. I've done um, lots of speaking at, at, at this conference, and and you know when someone says something. Uh, wrong like that. I do call those those sorts of things out okay. because I know how incredibly offensive they are um, to to not just other black people but but everybody else as well. Let me ask you about some of your colleagues. Well, ex colleague now, Rupa Huck. She was a Labour MP. She's no longer a Labour MP. She's lost the whip after making well, well <laughs> no doubt at all. Uh, your leader, Keir Thomas, said openly was a, a racist remark about uh, the chance of the Exchequer Kwasi Kwarteng as being only superficially black, basically because he's gone to Eden and he's got a posh accent. Um, she is a racist. Should she ever have the, the whip reinstated or should she uh, be suspended and losing her job as a Labour MP forever? Well, I think it was the right thing to do um, to, I have to say, and I, I have liked Rupert and have worked with her. Um, I think she made a, a complete misjudgment in terms of the comments she misjudgment? made. Misjudgment? Well, I, I, complete misjudgment. It was, it, was, it was rude. It was wrong. It was racist. She shouldn't have said it. Uh, but I she thinks it. She stood by the comments a couple of hours later. Well, as I understand it, she's now fully apologised. Yeah, but, she's, but she stood by... It wasn't a slip of the tongue. She thinks, well, she thinks that uh, if you sound... If, if you're rich, you go to a good school and you sound posh, you're not really black. That's racist. That's certainly not my view. My view. I'm, let me make that clear, and it's not the view of the... Uh, of but it's the what she thinks. So should she ever return to the Labour whip? Well, th that's a judgment for our chief whip. Um, uh, what to do make you who, think? investigating i think she was right to apologize um but uh i think it's right also that there's a full investigation and a full okay. conversation with her and our chief whip okay so my first personal reaction was who the bleep is she to say <laughs> to define what who's a black person and who's not a black person thank you very much um my second you know sort of following on from that i was thinking um well, you know, in, 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 in an odd way, inadvertently, she's kind of spoken a truth. You know, he's black, black, being black, brown or white should be a superficial thing, right? The main thing is your character, what you do and how you act. But I mean, that, that's, that's a kind of, you know, a broader point. But here now, politically, what this shows, you know, it shows two years ago, just after Don't Divide Us had set up, I was invited by the Academy of Ideas to talk about the perils of the new anti-racism. Mm. And in that speech and the, and the pamphlet that I wrote afterwards, I said that when you abandon this common sense view that you, we have a unique, you know, our humanity is uniquely indivisible, whatever our social, economic, political differences, as human beings, we have an equality from a toilet cleaner to, mm. you know, um, Nobel laureate. If you abandon that, which is what this ideology is doing, then you are opening the doors to a corrosive you know, corroding any basis for solidarity. Yeah. You are opening the doors to reordering society according to race. So it's re-racializing society at the very point where in Britain, 
we'd reached, you know, a really good place. Yeah, and, and the great. statistics were very clear on that. And that's the thing. You go back to the people do it all the time, but the Martin Luther King line, you know, this idea that it is, you know, it, it's the character, it's the content of your character. It's what you say, it's what you do that that, that matters, not not the, the colour of your skin. And yet this anti-racism, and again, most people are getting on with their days and their jobs and looking after the kids mm. and the supermarket shop don't deal with all this stuff, luckily, most of the time. But this it's called anti-racism. It's not good enough just to not be racist, as in to... I would not hire someone because of the colour of their skin, or I would hire someone because of the colour of their skin. But you must be actively uh, being aware of the colour of people's skin constantly because and treating people differently because of it. I mean, that that's not how I was raised. I don't think it's how most of my audience were raised. It feels <laughs> fundamentally wrong to me. And I think it's because it is fundamentally wrong. But this is the thing. This betrayed, did it not, this view of Rupa Huck, and I don't think she's alone in thinking this among the Labour MPs, no, um, no. this idea that... that He's not really a proper black man because proper black man would have I don't know an, a street accent and would and, and 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 you know I don't know he would would dress a different way, speak a different way, have different political views. He can't possibly be, be black because being black isn't an ethnicity; it's a it's a political standpoint almost. Yeah. Well, yes, it's it's hugely dangerous. She's politicising. Um, you know, she's racialising political views, right? And, and you're quite right. It's not, I mean, what, you know, in a way, it's good that she's come out and said it and it's so egregious, it's out there. You know, no one can avoid it. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, uh, it would be terrible if people just thought that it was a problem of just, you know, shocking individual politicians. Um, our report that we, that we recently put out, looking at um, councils and how, uh, the, count, the way councils were or were not the extent to which they were endorsing this new anti-racism at school policy showed that out of the most advised ones 61 percent were labor 28 percent were conservative yeah. and most of the labor ones were in london right and we're talking about we are talking about blatant indoctrination it's not happening in the same way say the gender um, the gender debate is through specific lessons in PSHE but it's percolating across the curriculum yeah. and across school mission statements. Yeah. And when you went as a society, if we say this is OK, we are heading down a very dangerous path. Yeah, well, we're getting into the situation where we're seeing you know, universities with camp whatever happens on the campuses in America, it starts happening here where they're actually having, you know, no white areas because black people need to be only among other black people or Asian people. We are into some, I mean, we're back into, you know, 1950s racial segregation territory, which so many people fought so hard uh, to end. Uh, Alka Segal Cuthbert, thank you for talking just wonderful sense and expressing, I think, quite a lot of the anger that a lot of people are feeling today about this. Director of Don't Divide Us, appreciate it.